Hello and welcome back to the tutorial series on advanced system security and digital forensics. So very firstly, let me have a quick recap of what we had done in our previous videos. I just told you that we are going to perform the various experiments listed here which are belonging to the syllabus of advanced system security and digital forensics subject. There are in total 14 experiments given in our syllabus. We'll try to focus on each of these experiments in detail and see how we install the various tools required for the experiment and how actually we carry out the experiments. So let's start this tutorial series with the very first experiment that is static code analysis using an open source tool known as FlawFinder. FlawFinder is a very basic tool. It is developed in Python and its main role is to find out flaws or simply you can say bugs in any C, C++ code. So the very first thing which we need to do is you need to download the flaw finder tool from the site mentioned over here. I have provided all the sites and the various resource tools in the description box. You can download the site, uh, download the tools required for this session from those URLs. So let's straight away jump to the task at hand, which is downloading the flaw finder tool. If you open the site, it's a very simple looking site with not so many CSS styling and all you simply go below over here downloading and installing here over here you can see a particular link you have to download this particular current released version of flow finder it's hardly in KBs after downloading it will look something like this it will be having few files exe files some text files and so on so our very first step is complete which is we have downloaded the flaw finder tool the next thing is we need to have anaconda framework python framework as i had mentioned this particular tool flaw finder is designed in python so we need to have a python framework for it if you are having python well and good if you are not having python you can download the anaconda distribution of python from the site mentioned here you can download the particular version of python as per your system that is either 32 bit or 64 bit it depends on that after downloading anaconda the next thing which you need to do is open anaconda prompt it's really simple go to start menu type anaconda prompt click on it it will look something like this when you open anaconda prompt the very next thing is you need to go to the directory where you have just now copied your flow finder tool so for example in my case it is flaw finder 2.0.10 to so simply copy that particular file name and paste it in your command prompt which is anaconda prompt so now you are inside the flaw finder folder what you need to do next is simply see whether you are inside the right folder or not yes it will show you that you are inside the right folder which is having the various flaw finder related softwares or flaw finder related pages okay so the next thing which you need to do is you need to install flow finder for installing flow finder the command is pip install flow finder in my case it is already installed so i'm uh, simply skipping the installation phase i will pause the video over here and come back later once it is installed okay so I hope you haven't encountered any issues installing the flow finder tool. In my case, it was already installed, so I simply skipped the step. You can see step number three over here. This is the step which is very important or very crucial because if you are unable to install flow finder, then the next steps won't have any value, won't have any meaning. So I hope you, are, uh, you have installed the flow finder using the Anaconda prompt. In case you are having any issues, you can simply uh, type in the message in the comment section. I will surely get back to it. Okay, so I hope you have installed the flow finder tool. The next step is you have to open a file that is a C file or C++ file in flow finder. So what is the step for it? You simply type Python space flow finder space the file path. The path of the file which you actually want to test in my case i have a folder called dummy 
inside it i have a part i have two particular c c plus plus files in fact a c file only let's see buggy.c and dummy.c so if i want to test it simply copy the path of the particular file and paste it over there in your anaconda prompt don't forget to mention the particular file name otherwise it will show some error dummy.c okay so we are done press enter you can see if there are, these are not errors by the way these are the actual flaws which the software has pointed out okay let me show it to you in detail you can see there are n number of results over here you can see final results so and so at the end when you scroll at the bottom you see there are total number of hits which are 36 so whether the file may have any error or not it doesn't matter it's having 36 flaws in our case flaws are the logical errors or you can say logical bugs which may cause any serious threat to the file in the future run so let's see these are the hits or these are the flaws which this particular tool has found out so let's quickly see what a flaw looks like okay you can see the very first result over here c32 5 so, okay so let me see what the c32 means simply it is nothing but the line number 32 where the error exists so i can quickly go to line number 32 and show you what kind of an error it is okay line number 32 shows gets f okay the error lies over here the flaw lies over here let's see what it says it does not check for buffer overflows use f gets instead so basically the flaw finder not only highlights the errors or highlight the flaws it also recommends you the correction which you can perform so that the error or the flaw gets solved so let's see over here line number 32 mentions gets f gets f has become obsolete so it's mentioning that instead of gets f you can use f gets or you can use f gets method so as we saw this particular tool flaw finder not only mentions you the flaws it also gives you the corrective measures which you can take to recover from that error so i hope experiment number one is clear to you that's it step number five is you simply need to analyze the static code there is nothing much uh, we can do in this particular experiment so in case this experiment comes for the practical exam i guess you might have one more experiment to do along with it because it is not that huge a program you can simply perform the program you can simply perform the experiment with three or four lines of code i hope you're clear with it that's it for this particular experiment if you have any queries you can simply type in your queries or your questions in the comment section i will surely get back to it okay let's meet you in the next lecture next section which is experiment number two that's vulnerability scanning using Nessus Nectar. Okay, thank you.